Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we understood the basics of uh, basics about how the process of sexual reproduction take place. Now as I mentioned before also that DNA copying is the basic concept behind sexual reproduction. So now the question is how DNA gets copied from two parents like it is not just one parent who is involved that is DNA will get copied and it will be there in the offspring it is not like that so now we have two parents so how exactly the DNA will get copied from the two parents. Now before we understand how DNA gets copied let us first try to see where is the DNA present inside our body. So inside the body, the body is made up of all cells. So many cells like this are present there. Inside the cell, we have the nucleus. So this nucleus, which you see here, the, this has been shown in the bigger picture. So inside the nucleus, you have this red colored thread like structures, which are nothing but the chromosomes. So if you magnify the chromosome, that is, this is how it will look like. And there you have the genes. That is the yellow colored structures. Now when you magnify the gene, you actually see the DNA. So this is where the DNA is present. And the DNA is made up of nucleotides. Uh, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. So it has two strands of nucleotides. And the sequence of the nucleotides decide the instruction for making the proteins. So if the sequence for this nucleotide changes, the moment the sequence changes, the proteins which will get synthesized will also change. So different proteins will get synthesized. Now when different proteins get synthesized, what will happen? So the traits and characters of the organism will become different due to the dif difference in the uh, sequence of the nucleotides inside the DNA. Right? Okay. So this is the basic uh, concept of DNA. Now the question is how it gets copied from parents. Now what happens is that both the parents will make a DNA copy. So this is the female or this is the mother and this is the father. So this is the mother and this is the father. So each of them will, will copy their DNA. This is the mother DNA. This is the father DNA. Now if both of them prepares a copy of DNA and those two copies combine to form the daughter, does that mean that the daughter will have double DNA? Because one from the mother and one from the father? No, that is not the case. So, so that this, that is not the case, that is why there are specialized cells present in our body which have only half the number of chromosomes and half the amount of DNA as compared to other cells of the body. Like most of the cells in our body have a specific number of chromosomes and the number of chromosomes is fixed in a species. For example, in human beings, the number of chromosomes present in all the cells of the body is 46. Now, this is with an exception. All the body cells, that is all the somatic cells have 46 chromosomes, except the sex cells, that is except the male sex cell and the female sex cell. Only they have half number of chromosomes, that is they have 23 chromosomes. So the mother will produce the, the female gamete. So the mother will produce, from the mother's body will come the female gamete and these gametes are the sex cells which are specialized cells in such a way that they have half the number of chromosomes in all the other cells of the body. So all other cells of the body have 46 chromosomes. So this one will have half number of chromosome and half amount of DNA. So it will have 23 chromosomes and just half the amount of DNA. Similarly, the, from the father's body also the father body will contribute the male gamete and the male gamete will again have half the amount of DNA and half the number of chromosome. Now these two will combine to form a total of 46 chromosomes and a DNA which will be the DNA of the daughter. So this will have the gene for the hormonal proteins. So the sequence of the nucleotides here will actually denote the gene for the hormone. I mean, this DNA actually 
for makes up the gene for example up to this portion let us suppose this is one gene which is for hormonal proteins which results in growth and development so the kind of gene it has here will be the kind of growth and development that will take place in the daughter's body similarly let us suppose this much portion has the structural proteins which will denote the physical trait so that way is the sequence in the dna will actually tell the different traits and characteristics of the daughter organism that is being produced right so this is how dna copying take place so now we are talking about the sex cells right which are the specialized cells so they are called gametes so let us talk about gametes in little more detail so gametes are nothing but the sex cells now in some organism the male and the female gametes are exactly identical to each other and such gametes are known as homogametes or isogametes they are also known as isogametes iso means same and gametes is gametes so when male and female gametes are exactly identical so in this case you do not even distinguish between male and female you just say that there are two gametes any of them can be male any of them can be female so examples where you see isogametes are chlamydomonas and spirogyra so there you can see uh, isogametes which are exactly identical the other types of uh, gametes are called the heterogametes hetero means different or inhomogeneous so here male and female gametes are different from each other in appearance as well as in motility so for example human beings in human beings the female gamete is bigger in size when compared to the male gamete but at the same time the female gamete is non motile but the male gamete is motile so male gamete can move female gamete cannot move female gamete primarily helps in food storage and also it is quite bigger in size so we can very easily distinguish between male and female gametes in case of human beings fusion of this male and female gametes give rise to a new organism so it is always not necessary that the male and female gamete has to be different from each other but we need both of them as far as sexual reproduction is concerned now in the later half of this lesson we will see how the gametes are produced how these gametes are produced in different organisms so we will talk about both plants as well as animals now when we talk about the process of sexual reproduction the reproductive organs which are involved they vary from one organism to another the uh, kind of reproductive organs which are present in human beings are not the same as those which are present in an elephant so they are all structurally they are all different so it is very difficult to talk about the uh, reproductive structures of, of each and every animal so what we will do here is we will i mean in general we will talk about the process of sexual reproduction that is how what are the important steps of sexual reproduction and what happens in those steps we are not going to talk about specifically about any particular animal in general we will talk about it and then in the next two lessons we will discuss about the process in detail so broadly the events can be classified into three stages first is pre fertilization stage then fertilization stage which is then followed by the post fertilization stage now what is fertilization fertilization is that stage stage where the actual fusion between male and female gametes take place now there are a set of events which take place before this fusion take place and there are also a set of events which take place after the fusion has taken place so they are named accordingly pre fertilization and post fertilization so in this lesson we will talk about the pre fertilization events fertilization and post fertilization events in in general for every plant and animal thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again